Hey, what's happening? I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins, the People Scholar. Uh, you know, I haven't done a video commentary for quite a while. Um, I, I guess it's because I've been so busy. There's always a million and one things going on. Um, I probably do about two or three radio interviews a day um, these days, as well as um, uh, dealing with some other stuff. You know, you had some stuff going on with the, the with the Rush card with um, Russell Simmons. Uh, I wanted to say Rush Limbaugh, right? Because it's the Rush card, but it's not Russell. It's not Rush Limbaugh. That's the fat guy who's now skinny, who's getting fat again, who used to be hooked on drugs, who now thinks that he's the head of the Republican Party. That's Rush Limbaugh. That's not Russell Simmons. I actually like Russell Simmons. I don't like Rush Limbaugh. But then again, hey, Rush Limbaugh is turning out to be Barack Obama's greatest asset because he's acting like such an ass set. I emphasize the word ass because Rush Limbaugh is just not a good human being. Now, uh, one of the things that people wanted me to do uh, in light of, um, I, I, I've been doing some work with M NBC uh, uh, as well as some other networks. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, one of the things people wanted me to do was sort of break down this um, recent Obama legislation in which uh, President Obama signed a new credit card bill that you might have heard. Now, this is not a credit card bill that you're going to get in the mail. So, you know, yo, if you're behind on your bill collectors, don't get scared now. Don't get scared. You know, but, uh, you know, if you if you are getting the bill collectors calling you, you got to go ahead and deal with that, you know, but... I understand what it's like to be broke because I remember what it was like, you know, when I was younger and, you know, my mother, we, we didn't have as much money. I remember hiding from the bill collectors a little bit. So, yo, you know, it's like uh, Cedric the Entertainer when he said um, that you can expect payment. You know, they say, um, uh, they asked, well, sir, can, when can we expect payment? And he said, well, you can expect payment whenever you want. But getting payment might be another thing. So anyway, about the Obama bill, uh, one of the things that President Obama took it upon himself to do, uh, for right or wrong, good or bad, is um, he decided to deal with credit card companies directly. Credit card companies are a little bit like financial drug dealers. They really are. I mean, drug dealers, and I, I made this comparison the other day uh, with my good friend Michelle Martin on, on NPR, and, I, and people say, well, why would you compare a credit card company to a drug dealer? It's because money is a drug. Money gets you high. Money makes you feel better, just like a drug does. And a America has become a country full of drug addicts. Uh, you know, easy access to credit is what led to the breakdown of our financial system and the recent financial crisis. And uh, and the thing about it is really the problem. This is just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, there are greater problems that you're going to see over the next 20 years. So get your paper straight. Manage your money. Save. Invest. And be smart with your money because uh, you know when when the stuff hits the fan, it's really going to be every man and woman and child for himself or herself. Now, in terms of dealing with the financial drug dealers, uh, the uh, federal government has decided to throw in a few extra little rules that they have to follow to make sure the drug dealers are at least operating within some boundary of, of morality, right? Almost like how you, you, uh, you know, you don't want drug dealers selling drugs to kids coming out of school, right? Because kids are vulnerable. Well, you know, a lot of American consumers are vulnerable because financial literacy is not very high in our country. Uh, one of the rules, for example, says that they actually have to tell you how many months it would take you to repay your balance uh, if you continue to make the minimum payment. And I think that's that's good information, right? I mean, sort of like a cigarette warning label saying, yo, look, you owe a billion dollars and you're going to be a billion years old before you pay this crap off unless you pay more than a minimum balance. I think that's good. Another thing is uh, they have to send you your statement to pay them uh, at least 21 days before the statement is due. And I like that too because I've seen cases where uh, it almost seemed that the bank was deliberately getting people their statements late or deliberately delaying the processing of the statement so that they could charge you the extra fees. One of the things people don't know about banks and credit card companies is they don't just make their profit off of interest. Interest is nice, but the, the way they make their money is off of the fees and the penalties and the extra stuff that they tack on, either if you behave outside of certain boundaries or if they just sort of slide those things in there and you're not even looking. You know, so that's what you have to look for. It's really those hidden fees that they really get you. Um, another thing they can't do is they, they can't raise your interest rates retroactively. That means they can't just say, oh, well, you owe us $12,000. Well, instead of charging you 15%, we're not going to charge you 25%. They can't do that anymore unless uh, you're more than 60 days late on a payment, in which case you're fair game. So don't be late on your payments. That's not good for your credit anyway. Uh, the other thing, uh, if you sign for a new credit card, they can't raise your interest rates uh, within a year of the time you sign that 
that, that credit card deal, which is a good thing. And also all the introductory rates, you know, the sort of teaser rates that they use to bring you in, they have to be for at least six months. They can't say, well, we're going to charge you this low rate for 10 minutes. And then after that, you go into this high rate because they, they can't use that whole bait and switch kind of thing. Um, the, the, you know, the most important part of this legislation to me as a college professor who has seen many, many college students just get body slammed by credit card companies. Uh, in, in case you're wondering, uh, there are seven million, 700 million credit cards issued uh, in the United States right now. And that's about uh, of 2.2 credit cards for every man, woman, and child in the entire country. Just too much. Just way too much. Um, and so, anyway, um, one of the things that I like about the legislation is that it actually uh, forces those who apply for credit cards under the age of 21 to literally prove that they can repay the debt. You see, the old game uh, before was that, you know, you you stalk yourself out on a college campus. You know, they sit around like little vultures, you know, little, little pimps just waiting to just find their next little victim. And they get these college students coming in who are like, ooh, free money, right? So they sign on the dotted line, and this kid is messing up their credit for the rest of their life. And so credit card companies can't do that anymore. Now college students have to prove, or people under the age of 21, which is a lot of college students, have to prove that they can actually repay that debt or they have to get their parent to call sign on that credit card which I think is a great idea I really like that um, oh and by the way as part of the legislation you can now carry a concealed weapon in a national park don't ask me where that came from apparently the National Rifle Association stepped in and want and, and tacked on this stupid little piece to the bill at the end that says that they can carry concealed weapons now uh, you know as a result of giving in on the credit card legislation now what the hell Carrying a gun has to do with your damn credit card. I have no idea, but that's not my job. I'm not trying to figure that out. But anyway, that's about it. Uh, come to drboysmoney.com to uh, get more financial advice. You can also check me out uh, regularly on AOL Black Voices. Uh, those are my people now. And uh, and also, we got some other big deals coming up. Um, and uh, I'll tell you about that later. Oh, and by the way, for all the haters who hate on a brother for not being affiliated with an HBCU, I just became affiliated, not gang affiliated, none of the Snoop Dogs stuff none of, oh man i better not do that because i ain't trying to get messed up by some crip out there but none of the, I'm, I'm not gang affiliated i'm affiliated professionally affiliated with the uh, barbara jordan uh policy institute at texas southern university and i'll be doing a lot of research with them uh, as you know uh some things got a little funny with syracuse university and i'm not but i'm not really interested in going into details with that um i love syracuse i love the people there uh you know but but you know there are other things out here to do and i'm not really even tripping on that one way or the other so I'm gone. Take care. And it's good to talk to you again face to face. God bless you. I'm gone. Peace.